This year's Olympics in London is the 40th anniversary of the Munich Massacre. During the 1972 Summer Olympics in Munich, a Palestinian terrorist group took Israeli Olympians hostage, demanding the release of over 200 Palestinian prisoners. The kidnappers killed 11 Israeli athletes and coaches and a German police officer. This story was brought to the big screen in the Steven Spielberg film Munich. Now, one would think that, regardless of your political views on Israel and Palestine, it makes sense to officially honor the victims of such a tragedy. But the IOC president has ruled out doing anything official during the opening ceremonies. He did hold a minute of silence today, but the games don't start for several days. Why the reluctance to draw attention to this anniversary? The arena host Michael Corrin joins me now. Hi, Michael. Hello there. All right, so, so what's going on? Off the top of your head, I mean, is this some form of political correctness? Well, no, it's the influence of the religion of peace, Islam, of course. They, uh, we found out that the Islamic bloc had said, no, you can't do this. And they have enormous amounts of money. They're not going to win many medals, but that's not the point. Uh, the reason that an Islamic country has the World Cup, the Soccer World Cup, for example, when the climate will be completely wrong for this, it'll be so hot, they'll barely be able to play. Uh, the reason that so many major soccer teams are now owned uh, by the Islamic world, by parts of the, the Gulf world, uh, is, is because, of course, of the money they have. And it would have been, I mean, to, to, to empathize with the Olympic Committee for a moment, it would have been very difficult because the moment silence would have been boycotted by all sorts of countries. Remember, there are numerous Islamic countries that will not compete against an Israeli athlete. Uh, two or three times now, Iran and Israel have met each other at judo. They, they both committed a very high level. And the Iranian ha has refused to fight the Israeli. And instead of uh, saying to Iran, you're expelled, you can, you can no longer compete again, they'll say, well, we'll give them a, a, another chance. Is I mean, why would that be even admissible? I mean, why wouldn't we expel someone right away or, or treat them as some, some joke country that's not even serious about being in the Olympics? Well, because, I, I don't understand. Because they're not South Africa. You see, it's very easy to be, to be all self-righteous and say, yes, apartheid's wrong, which of course it was, and we, and we can say those people have to go. But when it comes to Islam and the Arab world, there's huge amounts of, of, of money and, and oil, so you don't act like that. Um, is, the Israeli soccer team has to compete in the European competition. It's very hard to actually ever get to the final stages. They should be in the Asian, but they're not allowed to compete because there'll be Islamic countries there. And in this case, they could, it could have been very unpleasant. It could have been booing. Uh, there could have been catcalls. So I, I don't think it's the people behind the Olympic Committee are reluctant to do this out of political reasons. They would like to if they could. And of course, you have major politicians and majority politicians in the UK, the US, Australia, in many parts of the Western world who said there should be a minute silence. I mean, President Obama happen. said this. And if they're going to be intransigent against him, I mean, that's it. We're done. Which is slightly surprising with, with Barack Obama, but he has said this uh, at the Australian Parliament, and all sorts of people have. I mean, they've been campaigning for this, and many of them are, are not particular friends of Israel, the, the German Parliament as well. It's just simple humanity. The Olympics are meant to be free of politics. I know that's a naive thing to, 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 to really say, but they're meant to be. And so we should be saying from this, at this time, they just compete as people, as athletes, as the best, not as Israelis or Arabs or whatever. But look, it goes even further. The BBC, the BBC have a guide to the countries competing at the Olympics. The listing for Israel refused to say Jerusalem was the capital, but listed Jerusalem as the capital of Palestine. When right. somebody complained about that, they altered it slightly. But no, I mean, th th there are some political biases here on show. Michael, I, I want to ask you about sort of musing looking forward, because we recently heard the other week <coughs> that Iran, for instance, has banned actresses from going to international film festivals to collect awards unless they're wearing the hijab. Now, are, are we going to see certain things like this at, at places like the Olympics? Yeah, and look, Saudi Arabia had to allow a couple of women to compete. It had banned women from competing because there was so much pressure. Right. But the, the hypocrisy and the double standard, it, it, it's, it's almost, you, you want to vomit sometimes. I mean, it's so blatant. It's rather like the Soviets. You know, the Soviets talking about freedom and democracy when they had none of it. You have Syria and Libya are telling the rest of the world about human rights and, and equality. Um, Iran being members of disarmament committees at the United Nations. And now you have this example again. Okay, Michael, it's, it's clear to me what's going on. It's clear to you what's going on mm. here, but it seems nobody's saying this in any official capacity. So what is to be done? Uh, nothing at all, really. There'll be campaigns, there'll be protests, but it won't change anything. The because they have the numbers game? Because there's just so many of these Arab, Arab nations? Yeah, the Islamic bloc is massively powerful and very wealthy. It, it exists in the United Nations. It exists in sporting bodies as well. Um, one of the reasons there was so much uh, support for that little girl, it wasn't her fault, to wear the... Uh, the hijab when she was playing soccer was because 
many Islamic countries are funding international soccer now. That's why FIFA, the international soccer governing body, FIFA have changed the rules about women wearing some sort of head covering playing soccer. They would never have done this. They're very reactionary. But they've been told, well, look, we have probably a third of the major soccer club teams now in Europe, the leading ones. You don't go along with this. We're taking the money away. It's a very simple game they're playing. It's very effective. Now, Michael, is there any domestic concerns over these sorts of issues in the London Olympics? I mean, there is clearly a huge Arab presence in London. And I also hear that some of the locations where the Olympics are going to be held are close to some uh, perhaps risque areas. Yeah. Tell me about that, please. Well, it's not really Arab presence. In, in Britain, it will be uh, South Asian, Pakistani, Bangladeshi. Right, Stratford. Stratford in East London. <laughs> and this is where the mega mosque was to be built. Stratford was, was actually known uh, as a, a, a no gay, a, a gay free zone. There were stickers up with the rainbow signal with, with a slash through it because local Muslim fundamentalists had put these all over the place. This is I mean, that it. seems radical because I thought I thought Rob Ford was what was the biggest homophobic challenge ever is what the people on the left yeah, exactly. want to say. But we don't even hear about this. Oh, this, this seems nuts. If the Rob, line if, through the gay flag, that's oh, insane. R Rob Ford is just an ordinary, pretty yeah, typical Toronto guy. Now, listen, homophobia. Heh. Spend some time in the Islamic world. I mean, it's, you know, stop attacking Israel in, within the gay community. Look at the Arab world. Now, th this area of Stratford, and I, I grew up quite close to it, actually, is now probably majority Islamic. And it can be troubling and frightening. Now, they've t this area is also quite run down. This is where they built the, the, the main stadium. I'm sure it'll be fine because there are about 3,000 soldiers there and in the security. But after Bulgaria, you think Iran's not going to try and do something? You think Hezbollah? Look. Their, their main buddy, their toy boy in Syria, Assad, is, is, is just holding on for dear life now. So if they can disrupt and blame someone else, they'll do it. Michael, thanks so much for joining me on the program tonight, folks. It's Michael Korn. You can catch him every night on the arena. Some chilling thoughts on political correctness at the Olympics, not honoring the Munich massacre in the opening ceremonies. All right, tell us your thoughts on this. Facebook.com slash byline SNN. And here's what's coming up next.